Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Costex Coffee Break Classroom Series. Today I'm going to be taking you through the, the automatic workbook generation process. My name is Matt Donison, I'm one of the product specialists at Exactal. Now before we start I just want to go over Costex again for those of you who have not seen the product before. Uh, it's the market leading digital estimating software. Um, whereby we, we link the information extracted from the drawings or from the models live into the workbooks where you produce estimates, bills of quantities, cost plans, whatever you're doing, everything is live linked between the two views. So if you haven't seen um, the, the Costex tool, uh, then I encourage you to contact your local office and they will arrange for a demonstration for you. Now, just want to recap on last month's webinar, which was hosted by Herman. Uh, it was a really useful video telling you how to, to manage uh, the housekeeping within the software. Um, it's very easy over time when you're using any piece of software for, for the information to grow, your databases to get messy. Um, so it's just useful for you, uh, for useful tips to, to keep things organized for you. He covered how to arrange projects and buildings. Um, how to search for them within the, the main view of the open building screen, how to rearrange the columns, how to group by particular columns. He also covered uh, how to put drawings into folders and subfolders, uh, which, which helps massively if you're on a, a large project with lots and lots of drawings, and also how to clean up dimension groups um, that are no longer needed. If you do want to go back over that, then uh, you've got the link on the screen there, um, or you go to our YouTube page and you'll see a list of all of our videos. And I do encourage you to watch them because they are really, really useful. So today I'm going to go over automatic workbook generation, as I mentioned at the start. This is the fastest way to create workbooks. Rather than you sitting there dragging and dropping all of your measures into a, a workbook, it just puts everything in straight away for you automatically. Because of that, it saves on the potential for you to make errors, um, so you won't accidentally miss a particular item. Now, we do have checks uh, for that, so that's not a huge issue, but it helps you avoid the problem in the first place. Um, it also retains the benefits of the live link quantities. You can use it in conjunction with our zones feature. Um, and again, on zones, there is another video in the Coffee Break Classroom series, so I encourage you to watch that. But the the best thing about it is the ability to link to the rate libraries. So you can go from your dimension groups extracted from a model or from a 2D drawing to a fully costed estimate very, very quickly. Um, so I'll take you through the two processes, just generating a simple workbook and um, a fully costed one, as I mentioned on the screen now. So I will just cut over to Costex and I'll show you how that process works. So I have Costex open here now. I've got a model open. Now I'm doing this with a, a model, but of course the same process applies with a 2D drawing, but I'm doing this more, more for interest's sake. On the left hand side, I have my dimension groups that I've already extracted from the model. Now I'm not going to go through the process of doing that because we have covered it in previous videos, um, but for those who are interested, I have just used the Revit General uh, BIM template to import these quantities. Now of course the quantities you get out uh, on your models will, will vary depending on the actual model itself, uh, who's drawn it, what file type they're using, um, but we have covered that in previous webinars. So you can see this information on the left hand side. Now if I go over to my costing view, it is currently blank. Um, what many of you may be currently doing is just adding in a workbook, uh, a blank workbook and then dragging and dropping your items in as you need them. Um, now there's nothing wrong with that, but if you want to speed up the process, you can use the uh, automatic method. So what I'm going to do is click on the bottom half of the add button on the ribbon at the top rather than the, the top part. When I click on the bottom half, you see we get the option to generate workbook from dimension groups. So if I open that up, I first of all need to give this a name. So I'm going to call it something simple like estimate. You can see that I've got the options to break it down by dimension group folder. Uh, by zone, by, by group folder and zone details as well. But just for simplicity, we're going to stick with these dimension group folders that we have on the left hand side, floors, structural columns, foundations and so on. You have the zone information. Now I'm not going to cover zones today because we have done it in previous videos, but uh, you can 
get Costex to filter the information that it puts into the workbook to the selected zones. Now you can see um, I'm using three zone categories here um, and I've put everything in. Uh, by default, it will just select all. So everything from your dimension groups will go into the workbook. You can adjust the notes if you want to. Uh, by default, it will put in the time and date that you carry out this process. The descriptions in this case are going to come from the dimension group name rather than the rate library because we aren't using a rate library in this instance, which I will come back to in a second. You have the option for it to fill a code column. Uh, yes or no. So actually, I'm going to toggle that off for now. Uh, you can create missing rates if there are any missing. I am going to leave in the live quantity link. So uh, if you have this unticked, it will cut the live links. So if the, the quantities change, uh, say if you're using a 2D drawing and if you manually change the measure, uh, if you've cut that link, then it won't automatically update the workbook. So typically, you would normally leave that uh, sit, uh, selected, but there may be cases where you do want to cut those links. You have the option to leave live rate links, similar to what I said above for quantities, uh, but you can cut the links if you need to if you are using the rate libraries. If you are using those rate libraries and your rates have build-ups contained within them, you have the option to expand out those links. Now that comes into play more if you're using the user columns uh, to extract information from the rates instance if you want to automatically extract a labor plant materials build up from the rates and, and know what your totals are for each of those components uh, you would need to expand those light of rate links um, now I've, I've also covered that as part of one of our blog posts so if you are interested in in looking at how to do labor plant material uh, extractions then please go to our website and look at the blogs and we'll take you through that process and then finally round up quantities I will leave that enabled so if I press OK now Costux does a, a quick calculation and you can see it's then input all of the information into a workbook so I've got structural columns selected on the left hand side so just for ease let's go in and look at that again as normal anything in uh, in Costex where you have blue cells you double click to drill down into the detail and we can see there we have those three dimension groups, concrete round columns, 450, 750, and the 356, 368, 129 UCs are all inserted, as are the quantities. Because those quantities are in green, they are live linked. The rates uh, are zero because I'm not actually using a rate library. Um, but anywhere we have the green text, like normal, you can press the show source button and Costex will take you back to the drawing and it will highlight the, the quantities in question. So let me just spin this round and you can then see highlighted in green are those quantities. So that is how we do the, the process uh, from the simplest method without using the rate libraries. So what I've done now is reset the project. I've deleted out the previous workbook we were looking at and I've deleted out all of the takeoff that I've done previously. What I'll do is open up the schedule. Uh, you can either do it by clicking on this button at the bottom or from the ribbon at the top. Um, and if we scroll across, what you'll see is we have a couple of columns here in yellow. Anything in yellow means that that information has been added in manually. Now, if we open up the model properties, you can see that I've used an external properties file name. Um, so the model didn't come with a QS ID and it didn't come with a rate code in it but we have added that information to enable that the 5D workflow to take place. So you, you don't have to use the model as it's applied to you. You can supplement with this additional data. Um, so we, we have covered that as part of uh, other webinars. So I won't go through that process in too much detail, but suffice to say, once it is in the schedule, it can be used as part of the model mapping process as you would normally carry out. So speaking of that model mapping process, I'm just going to start that now. So I'm going to import using a model map and I will select the example model map. So this is running through now, extracting all the quantities and it's going to sort them into the two dimension group folders based on the QSID or, or the element that we'd put in. Now you can see we have all of the data here. Um, these dimension group names 
may well not make a lot of sense to, to most people, um, but they are following a coding system that is used in the rate libraries. So I mean, you, you can see here, these are 500 piles, 400 piles. So you get an idea of, of what's being used, but it is of course up to you to set up the coding systems um, how you want to use them. So once we've got all of that information uh, from the takeoff process, I will go into my costing view. Again, you can see that that is blank. So I'll press the bottom half of the add button. I will fill this uh, dimension, sorry, the workbook properties in again. So this will be an estimate. The breakdown, again, I will do it by dimension group folder. Default rate library, this time I'm gonna pick the rate library in question. Now, of course, you can have multiple rate libraries in Costex, so you can pick the, the relevant one for your project. The descriptions aren't going to be the dimension group name this time because these descriptions here don't really make a lot of sense as are previously covered. So what we're going to do is get Costex to search within the rate library for the relevant description. This time, however, I will enable the fill code column box um, and you'll see that in a second because what that will do is it will put this, this dimension group name in the code column, enabling us to easily see which line items relate to which dimension groups. But of course, it is personal preference as to whether you want that in there or not. You may want to leave it off and then use the uh, generate codes button in Costex or use uh, the auto coding features as part of the reports to apply the codes to the line items. I will leave everything else uh, enabled and then press OK. What you'll see now is Costex has generated me a workbook, but not only that, it has generated me an estimate. So the total for this model is 200,949. Now, if I look into the detail of a particular section, let's say upper floors, I double click on this 145,000 and we can see all of the items have been costed. So what we've done is we've gone from a model with codes in, rate codes, and we've gone to a fully costed estimate very quickly, very easily, um, without any uh, any errors as part of that process. Now, looking through here again, because the items are in green, it means they are live linked. So if you want to know where this description has come from, the quantity or the rate, just press the show source and you can see it loads up the rate properties. So you can see this description here, of course, comes from the description box. The rate comes from the rate box. And that's where it's getting that information from to populate the estimates. So it's a very, very useful tool. So to conclude, you can see what we've covered is the, the most efficient way to create workbooks. Um, whether you're just using the, the simple approach of putting all of your measured items into the workbook without costs, or if you do want to link them to the rate libraries to produce fully costed estimates very quickly as part of a 5D BIM process or whether you're, you're doing it from a 2D drawing um, perspective as well. It works with both approaches. Thank you for watching the webinar. I hope you found it useful. Um, it is one of the, the, the best tools uh, that, you, that you can utilize in Costex, but equally probably one of the most underutilized at the same time. So if you do have any questions on anything you've seen today, you have uh, my contact details there. Uh, you can contact us on the support email address if you are a current customer uh, or the phone number. Or if you aren't a current customer, but you do want to find out more, then please contact your local office um, and they will talk you through the process. We can set up a, a demonstration for you as well. And equally, keep an eye on the YouTube channel and our webinar, webinar page there to see all of our future videos as they are produced. 